Let's take a look at your actual database. Who do you start off with? Where do you draw candidates from? Think for a second of your ideal candidate. What are the traits that they possess? What are the skills? What are they themselves looking for? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Preston, I'm a professional recruiter in the technology industry. As the title suggests, today's video is gonna be all about building and maintaining a strong candidate database. Simply put, without one, you're not really gonna be able to take your career anywhere. So if you're new to the world of recruiting or looking to add more people to your roster, or or you're a job seeker yourself wondering what this all looks like from the other side, make sure you keep watching. This video is definitely for you. There are various methods, of course, to achieve that strong database, but they will all end with the same result, a talented pool of people you can call upon when the moment arises. It will also mean that clients, hiring managers that you source candidates for will have that much more confidence in your abilities when you're able to consistently produce top-notch potential hires. So then, we got the what, now let's move on to the how. But before we dive right in, please consider supporting a fellow recruiter give us a like, subscribe, click that bell, it really means a lot. So for the first order of business, let's take a look at your actual database. Be honest, is it organized? Is it optimized to allow you to easily search through candidates? Does it give you a headache every time you look at it? A well-maintained recruiting database holds immense value for recruiters and businesses alike. Most use an applicant tracking system or ATS to store their client and candidate information. An ATS can be a powerful tool, especially when it comes to finding the right candidate for a job. However, a a cluttered or outdated database can be a major source of stress. That's why it's absolutely crucial to keep your candidate database organized and up to date as best as you can. Here are some tips to help you manage your candidate database and turn it into competitive advantage. Screen candidate resumes and categorize them in your ATS systems as screened or vetted or however you wish to name it. This applies to regular job applicants and candidate sourced from third party tools, people that you've decided are on a higher tier and you'd be proud to present. So when the inevitable moment comes, when you need to start looking for a client, you can use the screen category as a filter to find quality candidates. Add skills instead of relying solely on keywords. This will make it easier to find candidates with specific skills and reduce the dependency on complex searches. It also prevents candidates from gaming the system by stuffing keywords or buzzwords into their resumes. Establish a process for managing duplicates. Your ATS should alert you about possible duplicates. Make sure your recruiters merge records and purge outdated or duplicate information to keep your database organized. Set expectations for candidate screening, categorizing, and cleansing. Report on the percentage or volume of candidates that have been properly screened and compare it across your team. You're gonna be getting a lot of input. Not all of it will be useful, so to speak. Also, consider hiring some outside help to help you clean your existing database if it's gotten too out of hand. Keeping your records and databases clean will be an ongoing effort. So, if you're lucky to find someone who's good at that job, definitely keep them. Definitely invest in third-party tools to structure incoming data, technologies that integrate with your ATS, can really help parse resumes into pre-existing or customized lists, making searching easier and more efficient. For good tools to help you with that, I'm gonna add a link in the description and also down below. Great, so now that you have a nice, clean, shiny database that's perfectly organized and ready to get to work. But what if you're just starting out and you don't really have a database or any candidates yet? Now, conventional wisdom might tell you that email, carpet bombing, and getting as many people as possible on your database is what you need. I'm gonna tell you from personal experience that is not really the ideal way to go. Would you rather have 100 people who are kind of right for the job or 10 people who'd be absolutely brilliant and targeted? So then, who do you start off with? Where do you draw candidates from? Start with your personal network. Get referrals from coworkers or people you've worked on projects with in the past. Was there a star worker who really stood out and made an impression? Get their contact info. What about past interviews? Were there people who maybe weren't a perfect fit for the job, but were otherwise great candidates? Networking events, social media connections, word of mouth, past work together. These are all areas where you can draw quality candidates from. And the best part, especially if you've seen them at work before, is that you'll know for sure that they're quality. This style, the more pound the pavement method is great for starting out and also great for taking a proactive approach, but there are other ways. One method is to make them come to you. That's right, they're not applying for a job, but rather applying to be on your roster of great candidates. Crazy as it may sound at first, the barrier for entry will be lower. The likelihood of getting accepted is higher and they'll get the comfort of knowing that someone is going to be helping them find work and also vouch for them. Think of your recruitment agency like a brand, a brand with its own identity and aesthetics. Consider creating or finding brand 
ambassadors or influencers to further promote your agency and stand out from the competition. I know this may sound crazy or unprecedented, but this is 2023. Every brand or company has an online presence and social media profile, and this might just be the unexpected hack you need to make a splash. Think for a second of your ideal candidate. What are the traits that they possess? What are the skills? What are they themselves looking for? Put yourself in their shoes and consider creating content with your new online presence that will encourage them to participate or engage with you. It might just start off as likes or views or semi-passive engagement, but with enough of the right kind of content, you can create a powerful following that will directly translate to people wanting to be part of your jobs. Have something like a join the team function or some other method for people to self-add to your roster. Sure, you might get a rather large influx of people, but you'll be sure that there are some gems in there and those are gonna be the ones you can count on when it's time for hiring. Having a platform is one thing, but keeping it going is another. With your social media following or new platform, you really wanna make sure that you're engaging your audience as well. Things like newsletters, informative or funny posts, and even YouTube videos, wink wink, will keep your people engaged. Now look, you could just do all of the old fashioned way and slowly build a list of clients, add them on LinkedIn, message them every now and then, and maybe share some updates about jobs opening up. And I'm sure that if you take that route, you'll be fine and you'll build up your business. But that's not why we're here watching this video. You don't need me to tell you all of that. My goal is to help you find creative ways to enhance your business and really make it as engaging for yourself as it is for the people you're connected with. I remember one day back in college, we had a guest lecturer teach us a class on cognitive behavior therapy. I'm not sure what the school's goal was, but I think they wanted to break up the monotony of our daily schedule. And this man was well qualified. He had a PhD in psychotherapy and just knew how to use it. Every time he dropped some knowledge on us, he'd follow it up with a joke. And then he'd drop an even bigger piece of information and people's eyes were completely glued on him. I quickly realized that in order to really get people to learn something or really just engage with whatever it is you're doing, there really needs to be an element of fun or entertainment. So on with this knowledge, both practical and theoretical, I wanna leave you with one more piece of information. And this one is absolutely the most critical. This one single factor will determine whether you'll be successful or not. Always be recruiting. Whether it's hitting up your connections on social media, creating a new platform, sending out emails to new folks, anything, this is your career, your brand, and the more you think of it that way, the more you'll likely hit your goals. Do whatever you can, stay up to date on the news, and reach out to companies and try to offer solutions to their problems. You never know where an opening might present itself. That one hiring manager at that company that you hit up might spend his entire week scratching his head looking for the right person to hire. And this entire time, you had the perfect candidate on your new roster, but you would have never known that if you've never reached out. Seriously, go on LinkedIn, find the hiring manager of different companies you want to work with and introduce yourself as a recruiter. At worst, you'll be ignored. At best, you'll make a huge milestone in your career. And if not, at least you'll have a chance to create a new contact for your network. I know doing something like that might sound a bit like the old adage your parents told us, you know, that walk into the store dressed in a suit and give the manager a firm handshake and ask for a job. But look, think of it as you not asking for anything, but instead offering your services and value you and the talents of the people that you have on your roster. If you can make that distinction in your head, you'll be miles ahead of any competition. Well, that's it for this one. Let me know in the comments below if this was a short guide that was helpful in preparing you for your future career in recruiting, or if it offered any good advice or value for the ones that you already have. Please feel free to support a fellow recruiter. Give us a like, subscribe, click that bell. It really means a lot and helps us with the algorithm. Feel free to also follow me at Preston underscore Park as I try my best to also post behind the scenes content daily. Thank you so much again, and we'll see you on the next one.